Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. We have been discussing about wing, wing platform. We talked about aerofoil, talked about twist, talked about taper ratio to ensure near elliptic lift distribution, primarily for low speed airplane so that induced drag is low. We talked about sweep. When you talk about sweep, we are talking about high speed or a supersonic airplane. We also talked about critical Mach number, drag divergence Mach number, all were related to airfoil and wing in terms of their landform or their cross section. Now next step is what we will be discussing and sharing what is there in the domain of aircraft. When you talk about wing, we also should talk about wing incidence. What do I mean by that? Fundamentally, wing is primarily to give lift. And lift, we know this is dynamic pressure. S into CL and CL is depending upon type of airfoil you are using so CL is CL naught plus CL alpha into alpha at the initial stage or during conceptual stage we can assume that lift on the wing is approximately same order as lift the whole aircraft. Although we understand lift on the whole aircraft is summation of lift on the wing, on the horizontal tail, the fuselage, canard. But initially you just think like that ki, because majority part is wing. So the question is if I am flying such that I am to fly at L by D max so that thrust required is minimum which is typically during cruise and that CL is roughly 3 naught by K where you have assumed CD is CD naught plus KCL square. So I have an option. Either I design the airplane, let's say this angle is 3 degrees, let us say. What is the meaning of that? 3 degrees? That CL is that CL which corresponds to 3 degree of alpha. That is if I come here, if I put here, let's say CL is 0.3 and which corresponds to let's say alpha equal to 3 degree. That is what 3 degree I am writing here. I have to give 3 degree to the wing. So what is the best way? Suppose if this is the fuselage and this is the wing and the wing cord is, assume that the wing is untwisted and the wing cord is parallel to the fuselage center line. So if I want to give 3 degree, I have to rotate the whole airplane like this. So wing will also have 3 degrees and fuselage also will have 3 degrees. So lift will primarily come from the wing, but fuselage being at 3 degree will also give some drag, larger drag. So the question comes, why do you want to tilt the fuselage? Why not set the wing this is the fuselage reference line set the wing so that wing setting angle is 3 degrees so in that case ideally what will happen the fuselage will have almost 0 degree alpha fuselage 
will be zero degrees. So drag from the fuselage will be much lower. So that was the concept behind wing incidence. But now you know there are cambered aerofoil, lift you are able to generate at smaller angle of attack. And anyway, these considerations are for crews. And as the airplane has become higher and higher in terms of speed, the angle of attack requirement is very, very low. So it's not necessary all the aircraft will be utilizing this concept. Many aircraft will find there is absolutely no uh, wing incidence angle. But historically, it is to be noticed that around for general aviation around 2 degrees wing setting angle for transport maybe around order of 1 degree and military maybe 0 degree but whether it is 0, 1 or 2 degrees it doesn't make much of a difference as far as carefully designed fuselage is concerned in terms of drag minimization. But these are general guidelines. Uh, you will appreciate that you don't want to design an airplane where during the cruise it has huge attitude to ensure large angle of attack. Then how, how the crew members will move inside the aircraft fuselage. So this is typically, typically the guideline. You will know more about the utility of this wing setting angle when you talk about controlling the airplane during the stability design of the airplane. Right? But I thought we must mention this. Similarly, you will find aircraft having wings like this located at the bottom there could be like this and there could be like this you are aware this is a mid wing configuration this is high wing configuration and this is low wing configuration you also know why such configurations are uh, chosen aerodynamically from stability point of view. That a high wing will be laterally more stable as far as wing contribution is concerned. That is, if this is the high wing, lateral stability means if it banks, it should try to come back. It should have an initial tendency to come back. So what happens if the airplane banks, it starts side slipping. And because the high wing, the air will gust in and it will try to turn it back. Which you know in terms of CL beta less than zero. For low wing, it's reverse. If it banks, the contribution from the wing will make it further roll a further bank because it is laterally unstable, statically unstable as far as low wing is concerned. But you will find when I am saying low wing, typically I am meaning this. This is what laterally unstable. But here, some angle has been given. This is low wing with dihedral. This is low wing with dihedral. This is typical low wing. contrast to a high wing configuration here. This is having the characteristic of laterally being unstable as far as wing contribution is concerned. But we will never find a low wing like this. If there is a low wing requirement for some reason or the other, it will have a shape like this. And this angle we call it dihedral angle. So these low wings are given some dihedral angle. So what is the dihedral angle does? Dihedral angle will be doing exactly same what high wing is doing. 
in terms of effect. If it, there's a dihedral, like this, see suppose it's low wing, as it banks so, and starts side slipping, air gust in here, it further banks. But if there is a dihedral like this for low wing, as it turns, the air pinches here and it tries to take it back. So with dihedral, again you add lateral stability, okay? Mid wing, of course, you see from the symmetric mid section of the fuselage, theoretically speaking, but you will find never this shape is completely circular. Typical shape could be something like this. It could be something like this. Depending upon fuselage requirement, other requirements. When I talk about dihedral, it is important at this stage because we are preparing ourselves for conceptual design. It is important at this stage to have feel for some numbers which are historical based. So if I write dihedral angle for unswept civil airplane, for low wing, for mid wing, and for high wing, typically 5 to 7 degrees, for mid wing 2 to 4 degrees, for high wing 0 to 2 degrees. In fact, for high wing, you may not require any dihedral. In contrast, if you have a high wing, you have to ensure that it should not become overstable as per lateral stability is concerned. But then these are the combinations. Because we understand as a designer, the lateral stability we can get from vertical tail also. So if this is already producing a lot of lateral stability, then size of the vertical tail you can reduce. But when you reduce, it should not be at the cost of rudder power. So all this optimization goes on, right? Similarly, for subsonic swept, it is 3 to 7 degrees, minus 2 to 2 degrees, and minus 5 to minus 5, 2 degrees. You could see high wing and swept subsonic. Because of high wing, aircraft has large lateral stability. It has a vertical tail. So you may have to actually reduce the lateral stability because of high wing. There you give anhydral, it will down like this. So all this combination goes on, right? Then you will be also observing few other things which are related to more on the arrangement and requirement of operation rather than stability. One general observation, you can note down high speed commercial transport are generally low wing. Similar aircraft for military, you will find their high wing. This is general trend, and these design layouts are not really to talk in terms of stability, or lateral stability only, it is more driven by your operational requirement, because operational requirement for civil transport, commercial transport, and military transports are subtly different, right? So as a designer, you need to know what type of aircraft you are doing, it is just not knowing aerofoil, wing, elliptic ratio and all, from operation side also, you, you have to be 
careful and we should take those considerations into the final configuration, right? That's why I am uh, glancing through all this information. Let us see major benefit of highway. We are not discussing about any stability issues now. For example, if I draw a high wing, this is typically your high wing configuration. What are these? These are landing gears. So where are the landing gears housed for such configuration, high wing configuration? It has to be invariably on the fuselage. So landing gear is housed in the fuselage and landing gear takes all the impact load. So this part of the fuselage, this part has to be highly Strengthened. The moment we talk about highly strengthened, natural conclusion would be the weight may increase additionally. Right? So one of the major advantage of uh, high wing is to see that fuselage placing near the ground. We'll understand when we talk about lowing. And since engines are here, so your jet engine, jet engine or engine in general especially jet engine I'm mentioning, there is a lot of ground clearance as larger ground clearances. Another thing, because it's a high wing, suppose I'm landing and because of some defect, some landing defect, this possibility the wing tip hitting the ground like this, okay? So, because the high wing, that wing tip hitting the ground during some sort of disturbed landing is less. Because this is a high wing. Another thing you could see that if it is a high wing, I can reinforce the wing for low subsonic or subsonic airplane by giving start. I can put start, which will take the load on the wing. So structurally, it makes the wing stronger. The load on the wing is shared by the strut. So the strut arrangement, arrangement to take load and thus relieving the wing and release the wing from stress crossing a limit. One may argue the moment I put strut, the drag will increase. We are talking about low speed aircraft here, we'll talk about strut. Yes, there is a increase in the, slight increase in the uh, drag, but what is done generally, the strut they are given aerofoil cover, streamline cover, to minimize that. But if you see that drag increase compared to the drag already experienced by the airplane, that in comparison that's very less. But what you gain is, you can share the load on the wing and thus reduces the stiffening required for the wing. Otherwise, that will cause weight of the wing increasing unnecessarily. All this optimization goes on, right? But then, everything is not 
happy with highway if you see you have to make sure that the wing sits on the fuselage one good thing should come to your mind why not it goes inside the fuselage the moment it goes inside the fuselage if i install it like this which we will be doing for other if i put the wing like this and if there is a cut out here there is a cut out here right then again you have to do reinforcement here reinforcement here so all this thing will again go on adding the weight and local stress concentration will happen but if it is like this then what we need some fairing so we do some fairing and since this has a thickness we will find there will be a blunt zone blunt area which is hitting the air uh, so this may cause increment in drag if it was inside then this portion will not get exposed to the air so you will not get drag because of this exposed portion this is one disadvantage then again we come back to another advantage which is very very important when you talk about regional transport that is which are for short distance and the runways are not as good as normal runway so we call it unpaved runway there you need higher CL max so that your takeoff distance is less and how do you increase CL max locally by using flaps put flaps down since it is a high wing you have enough space to put the flaps down maximum deflection of flaps could be whatever you want there is no restriction of ground clearance if it is a low wing you will find there is a limitations right this is one advantage another you could see that since it is a high wing ground effect will be little lesser than a low wing if it is here the low wing will be close to the ground so if ground effect is not that large so the aircraft will not float because of ground effect when there is sudden increase in the CL so the tendency of airplane to float which causes a lot of landing problem for the pilot but high wing will have a lesser ground effect issues just to complete the discussion if we think of mid wing the mid wing here also the ground clearance is fairly okay not as large as high wing but fair enough you know why ground clearance is also required because you understand if the engines are here if they are too close to the ground then the debris from the airstrip they go inside the wing inside the engine and they may damage the engine right they may damage the propeller for a propeller driven engine so ground clearance is okay typically mid wing configuration for military aircraft will find mid wing configuration for military aircraft this is general statement aircraft is primarily to ensure that they can carry aircraft bombs on wings also you can understand the high wing is a high wing aircraft the pilots visibility may get restricted this part is important for a fighter airplane for his survival he needs to see what is happening out rear of the airplane right 
Sometimes if he's flying like this, because of high wing, it may obstruct the visibility of the pilot. Then for mid wing, you should be also aware, mid wing means this wing has to pass carryover through the fuselage. So here, lots of reinforcements required. Required. I will try to show you with what type of aircraft we have got, how this wing has been mounted. But unfortunately, all, all the airplanes are airworthy except one for demonstration. Airworthy airplane, we will not be allowed to open the wing. But still, we will try to show you how these arrangements are made. I request all of you, please see books, see, do a Google search and see how the wings are attached to the fuselage for the high wing, for the low wing, for the mid wing. This is extremely important because you have to ensure that the wing is safe enough, right? And if you are not properly designed, the weight unnecessarily will increase. This is mid wing and when you come to low wing, if this is the fuselage, Low wing with the hydral is here, right? And it has to pass through low wing is necessarily having an area the volume of a fuselage being captured. So we'll find that fuselage will have some percentage of area left for wing to pass through, carry over. But same time you understand if you are now putting the engine here, here, they will be too close, too close to ground. The wings are too close to the ground, so we have to ensure the fuselage is raised upward so that there is enough clearance. So invariably you'll find the landing gears, long landing gears which are installed in the wing, they are of larger length, larger height. And then this calls for reinforcement here, this reinforcement here, and then also please understand one advantage is that you can stack this landing gear inside the wing. So landing gear goes inside the wing. So again, mechanisms comes. Larger thing has to move like this. So this is what your uh, low wing configuration uh, will demand. Mostly the structural people are concerned whenever you tell them high wing, low wing, or a mid wing. Because their design philosophy will decide whether the weight is going toward increasing side or a decreasing side or an optimal side. Right? This, it may not be very surprising that this dihedral angle, what we put for a low wing, may have large component which attributes towards a clearance of the tip from the ground. That may decide. Because I do not want the aircraft lands and hits the ground. So this dihedral angle may be predominantly decided by how much clearance you want to keep from the ground. So all this combination goes on, right? That's why beginning of the design, I think this sort of a knowledge exchange is important before you start conceiving what will be your conceptual aircraft. Another important part of wing is wing tips. And you know what is so important about wing tips? We know that our aim is to ensure high L by D and one way to increase L by D is to reduce induced drag. 
and induced drag phenomena is something here, but the vortices forms here because of pressure dis differences. So if you want to reduce this induced drag, somehow I should discourage the tendency of the flow from high pressure to lower pressure region. There are many ways of doing it. If you have a simple fair tip, this will allow the flow to easily go and encircle and create winctive vortices. One is better way of how the evolution happened that you make it a little sharper. Not this sharp, but a little sharper. The moment you make a little sharper, this discourages smoothly going into vortex vortices. The other way of handling is historically people have handled you simply cut it here. So there is there is no abrupt it's an abrupt cut. So that will also discourage flow to encircle and go from higher to lower pressure. Based on this philosophy you'll find wing tips are also designed like this. Yeah, this angle could be roughly 30 degree. Here also you are discouraging movement of air from bottom to up. And you could see that this is very popular in gliders. We say just cut it like that. This and sometime you'll find some curvature is also given. You'll find the gliders. If you come to Flight Lab, I'll show you our gliders having this sort of a cut to reduce induced drag. You'll also find this sort of a construction we call upswept. The sinus 912 motor glider which we have has this sort of a upswept. More if you do this, please understand this will affect the lateral characteristics also, right? Common sense says, why not you simply, why so many things? You put a flat plate here and there's a physical obstruction from lower to upper surface. But just doing this, it also increases the drag because of this plate. So. We need to know what is finally we are getting. This was also used. Uh, whatever I was talking here, this is Horner. Horner wing tips, very famous, very popular. And nowadays, what you say, winglets, they have gone a little higher. It is something shaped like this. We'll be talking about those things in detail, in design. This looks like this. What is done, whatever energy is coming from the bottom to top, that they are trying to give a shape on this winglet. So that gives the thrust to the forward direction. So use that energy, use that momentum, and divert it such a way I get a forward thrust. So it not only uh, put a restriction, but conveniently convert that into a thrust. We say that drag gets reduced, the so opposite of drag. This typically is the principle of winglets. Um, you must do an assignment on winglets. If I remember, in one of the forum, I may ask you to do an assignment on winglets. This is something you need to understand. So this general layout of wing tips. We have seen aerofoil to wing, aspect ratio, taper ratio, sweep back. We talked about high wing, low wing, generally what is seen around, right? How, what type of tips, wing tips. But these are to excite your mind. You are supposed to think beyond this. 
a designer will take some idea from here and, there, and he may make a different altogether layout. In the next lecture, I'll be talking about tail arrangement. And once you are through with tail arrangement, then I can go for thrust loading, wing loading, again coming back to the performance. So far, you should, when you close your eyes, you should be able to see aircraft wing, some taper ratio, elliptic distribution, winglets, all these things should come to your mind. Just take a pencil and start sketching, okay, what type of wing you want, what sort of winglets you want to do. Make it a habit, draw different, different sketches. And as you start designing an airplane, you may pick one of your sketches, you may pick one of your sketches. Thank you, thank you very much.